When I began analyzing the details of the Tesla Model 2, I came across something that, I confess, quite surprised me. There's a 0.9 meter gap in the car's chassis. At first glance, this sounds like a design flaw, something that would raise questions about safety and durability. But I soon realized it's not a flaw. It's a strategic decision. Elon Musk himself has publicly confirmed that this feature is part of the car's concept. And then comes the inevitable question. Why would a new generation electric car have nearly a meter of void right in the middle of its structure? To understand this, I had to go back in time and remember how automobiles have always been manufactured. For decades, the industry relied on hundreds of pressed metal sheets, joined by thousands of welds. In a conventional sedan, for example, the chassis can have more than 400 parts connected by up to 1,600 welds. It seems robust, but each weld is also a weak point, increasing the risk in the event of a collision. It's like building a castle by gluing small pieces together. Every seam can come loose. Tesla decided to reverse this logic. Instead of relying on hundreds of small welded parts, it began using so-called mega castings. Giant aluminum parts are molded in presses, weighing up to 9,000 tons. This replaces much of the welding with entire structures, cast from a single block. This method was already used on the front and rear of other models, but with the Model 2, the company went further. That's precisely where the 0.9 meter gap comes in. It's located between the two massive aluminum pieces, the front and the rear. Instead of filling this gap with welds and metal reinforcements, Tesla decided to use the battery pack itself as a structural element. In other words, the gap isn't empty. It's the point where the battery acts as an ultra-rigid beam, joining the two parts and distributing forces much more efficiently than any weld could. The logic behind this is simple. Reduce weight, increase rigidity, and cut production costs. Producing two massive parts takes just a few minutes, while welding 1,600 points can take hours, require more labor, and increase the risk of error. This efficiency helps make the ultimate goal achievable, bringing the Model 2 to market for under $25,000. But why is there so much controversy surrounding this idea? The answer lies in perception. Those accustomed to continuous reinforced structures find it strange to see a physical space between two parts. Photos of this gap began circulating on social media, accompanied by alarmist comments claiming the car could even split in half in an accident. Some even nicknamed the Model 2 a stitched car. Elon Musk was blunt. It's not about stitching, it's about integration. Every detail of this fit was designed to withstand stresses that would destroy a traditional vehicle. The use of mega castings, it was not designed just to impress, but to solve problems that many people didn't even know existed. Furthermore, each weld represents cost and fragility. The welding process alone can add up to $1,000 to the final price of a conventionally manufactured car. Ultimately, the consumer pays for this inefficiency. Tesla realized that to offer a truly affordable electric car, it needed to reinvent the assembly line. And the beauty of this revolution lies precisely in its simplicity, reducing hundreds of parts to just two or three. This eliminates weak points, speeds up production by up to 30 times, and ensures more precise fittings, with less risk of human error. In the case of the Model 2, this strategy also resulted in a 27% reduction in the weight of the undercarriage. Less weight means better performance, greater range, less wear on brakes and suspension, and, in emergencies, greater safety, as there is less mass to shift during a collision. It's this combination that made possible what once seemed impossible, a Tesla under $25,000. And the most impressive thing is that this isn't just hype, but applied engineering that will change the automotive industry forever. When I dug into the numbers, I saw that the logic is unbeatable. Eliminate what's unnecessary or inefficient in the production process. By cutting hundreds of parts and thousands of welds, labor, material, and rework costs drop dramatically. And the lower the costs within the factory, the more affordable the car becomes for the end consumer. This marks a turning point for the entire industry. Traditional automakers, accustomed to tight margins and outdated methods, are now forced to take a hard look at what once seemed like just another Tesla futuristic oddity. Mega casting, it's gone from being an experiment to becoming a trend. There are already rumors that other brands are trying to copy the technique, even without the necessary technology or infrastructure. Ultimately, 
that 0.9 meter gap so criticized by so many goes far beyond a structural detail. It symbolizes a new philosophy. This is where the front and rear sections meet, forming the car's floor. This junction was designed to withstand forces that would destroy a conventional chassis full of welds. Instead of hundreds of weak points, the Model 2 has just three main points, reinforced and engineered for maximum strength. Fewer points, more strength, more efficiency. This is the essence of change. Making the battery part of the structure may seem bold, but every detail was calculated, optimized, and tested. Tesla not only redesigned the car, but reimagined the logic of automotive construction. Every gram saved, every second saved on the assembly line, every screw that was avoided directly impacts the final product. And the results are already evident. Competitive pricing, impressive performance, and a seemingly simple design that conceals one of the most ambitious innovations in recent engineering. While the transition to an electric future was previously slow, with the Model 2 it's accelerating like never before. Because the goal isn't just to electrify cars, but to make them viable, accessible, and safe for everyone. And it all begins precisely in that 0.9 meter space that has generated so much debate. It's physical proof that eliminating excess doesn't mean sacrificing safety. Often it's in the void that true strength is found. When I began to delve deeper into the Tesla Model 2's chassis, I realized the biggest difference lies in how three main elements, the front, the rear, and the battery pack, come together to form the car's structural heart. And this is precisely where Tesla truly broke with the past. Forget traditional welding. Instead, the company relied on structural adhesives from the aerospace industry, the same ones used to hold airplane fuselages together at 33,000 feet. Yes, the same material that holds an entire airplane together is now part of the structure of a $25,000 car. But it doesn't stop there. Each of these joints is reinforced with ultra-high-strength bolts capable of withstanding up to 1,200 MPA, compressing the parts with a force equivalent to 30,000 pounds. It's as if two blocks of aluminum were pressed together until they become virtually inseparable. The contact area reaches two. Seven square meters, a dramatic difference from the fragile millimeter lines of a typical weld. This means that instead of multiple scattered weak points, Model 2 has a uniform connection, capable of distributing impacts much more efficiently. And it's not just theory. Testing has already proven the results. The new chassis achieved 30% greater torsional rigidity compared to the Model 3, despite weighing 20% less. When I saw these numbers, the practical impact of this became clear. More rigidity means a car that responds better in fast corners and is more resistant to side collisions. And with the weight reduction came direct benefits. Longer battery life, greater stability, less tire and brake wear, and much more predictable behavior in sudden maneuvers. The very feeling behind the wheel changes. More firmness, more precision, as if the entire car were a single piece, even though it's modular. And there's another key benefit, safety in severe accidents. The goal isn't just to reduce deformations, but to ensure the passenger compartment remains intact. And testing has confirmed this. The Model 2 can absorb up to 25% more energy in a collision than the Model 3, while also reducing cabin intrusion by 15%. In other words, it's not just evolution, it's a redefinition of the concept of occupant protection. Another detail that caught my attention was how all this was achieved with fewer parts. The new chassis weighs about 180 kilograms, compared to 225 kilograms for the previous steel version. This 45 kilogram difference may seem small, but in an electric car, every kilogram counts. Less weight means less inertial load when cornering, less effort from the brakes and suspension as well as lighter and more efficient steering. And best of all, more range, without the need for a larger and more expensive battery. That's when I realized how everything connects. Weight, cost, production time, and safety all work together in this project. While in a traditional factory, the stamping and welding process takes up to six hours. At Tesla, each part can be cast in just 10 minutes. With simplified assembly and less need for rework, productivity skyrockets up to 36 times higher. This shift in scale completely changes the game for affordable electric cars. What was once only viable in luxury vehicles is now reaching the mainstream segment. And this is already being reflected in the market, while competitors still struggle to offer electric vehicles under $30,000.
Tesla is already projecting profits with a $25,000 model that's lighter, safer, and features a more advanced chassis. It all revolves around a bold decision, building a structure based on just three main connection points and a 0.9 meter gap between them. This gap, which many people found strange at first glance, has become one of the strongest connections ever applied to a mass production car. While some are still trying to understand how this is possible, Tesla has already put the solution into practice, not in prototypes, but in a road-ready vehicle. And perhaps the most fascinating point is this. What seems strange today, a chassis with a void in the middle, may very well become the industry standard in the future. After all, if eliminating welds makes the car cheaper and safer, the question remains, why didn't anyone think of this before? When I compare traditional welding methods with what Tesla did on the Model 2, the difference is stark. For decades, it was believed that the more welds, the safer the car. But Tesla engineers realized something counterintuitive. More weak points don't mean more protection. In fact, they can increase vulnerability. This realization led to the creation of a structure with only three joining points, but extremely reinforced. And this is even evident in the choice of materials. The aluminum used in the Model 2 isn't just any ordinary alloy. It's Tesla's own formula, with tensile strengths ranging from 140 to 175 MPa, while the industry standard is between 90 and 120 MPa. In practice, this represents up to 40% greater strength than what's currently on the market. When I began to delve deeper into the new alloy used in the Tesla Model 2, I realized it offers much more than mechanical strength. This special material not only better withstands impacts, pressure, and wear, but also offers high electrical conductivity, which directly contributes to the car's efficiency. But it's not just the material itself that makes the difference. The way the parts are joined is the real secret. Tesla uses a structural bonding system with adhesives capable of withstanding up to 30 MPa of shear, the same standard used in commercial aviation. When this technology is combined with ultra-high strength bolts, the result is a bond so solid that, in many cases, it's stronger than aluminum itself. In extreme situations, the metal gives way before the joint breaks. It's as if the weakest link in the chain ceases to be the link and becomes the rest of the chain. A detail that almost no one notices, but which completely changes the design, is the force distribution area. While a traditional weld concentrates the load in small lines just 2 millimeters wide, Tesla manages to spread that pressure across 2.7 square meters. This is over a thousand times greater in support area, which completely transforms how the car reacts in a collision. Instead of concentrating all the energy in a single weak point, it is dispersed reducing localized ruptures and preventing serious deformations. And the numbers make this abundantly clear. The Model 2 achieved a torsional rigidity of 35,000 newton meters per degree, compared to 26,000 for the Model 3. In practice, this means the car twists less, even under intense forces. This extra rigidity protects the cabin, improves handling, and gives the driver a feeling of solidity in everyday use. And most impressively, all of this was achieved without adding weight. In fact, the new structure is lighter, more efficient, and even simpler to manufacture. In other words, there was no trade-off between cost and performance. Both sides came out ahead. Another point that caught my attention is the modularity. With only three large structural blocks, maintenance becomes more predictable and simple. In the event of a serious accident, for example, it's possible to replace just one of the modules without having to disassemble the entire car. This drastically reduces both repair costs and vehicle downtime. Furthermore, because the joints are designed to be durable and accessible, Tesla's specialized workshops can perform repairs using proper aluminum welding without the need for time-consuming rebuilds. For the consumer, the result is straightforward. Fewer after-sales headaches. With fewer weak points, there's less need for corrective maintenance, fewer trips to the repair shop, and a much more durable structure. 